<laughs> Beam attack! <laughs> oh. oh, what the fuck? He thought Mario died! 4 HP, whoa shit! Wait, our star is in here too. There you are. <laughs> okay. Oh, hey guys, it's me, Mario. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> All three of you died to the wow. same obstacle. Oh, fuck! This video will get me some dislikes for this opinion. Please watch this video and comment down below on why I am right or wrong in my assessment. For this controversial take, I am looking at one of the more popular boards that I personally do not like. For many Mario Party fans, especially those who grew up with 8, this board is treated as a great board. It's even treated as far better than the other board that has the exact same gimmick, Windmillville from Mario Party 7. I don't care for either board, but I do prefer Windmillville because of the some reasons that actually ruins Tycoon Town massively. I'll discuss those reasons later on in the video. I don't have a massive fan base, nor am I very popular. So if you ever see this video, please give it a like and share it. I actually want to help like this board and hopefully maybe improve it. So if there are any ways actually to make this board better, I would say I'd make it possible to turn this board from being the absolute worst board in Mario Party 8 to one that actually can rival the best. It is also one of the few boards that I've played where if, whenever I give it on a tier list, it's always a solid 1 star or an F tier status. And every tier list that I do like for Mario Party, it will always be near the bottom. Below even the likes of DS's boards, Island Tours, Star Rushes, Super, Super Mario Party, all those boards, even 9 and 10s, wow. are better than this board. On my Discord server, linked in the description down below, after a few votes from some people, only three boards actually had no votes, and Koopa's Tycoon Town was one of them. On the Mario Party subreddit, the board with most votes on my poll I did was Koopa's Tycoon Town. Heck, in a Something that happened actually a couple years ago in a Mario Party, which board is the best, you know, or board elimination kind of, you know, thing they did. This board, Koopa's Tycoon Town, beat Horrorland as the best board by one point. One that I kind of felt was absolute bullshit, because that board, Koopa's Tycoon Town, should never should have lasted all the way and ended up winning. It was basically AGT, you know, Season 11 winner where the one person actually won should not have won but managed to make it always to the finals because of reasons somehow in particular i don't know how or why and that's why i really can explain but it was more of a you gotta be shitting me on the mario party discord server it's a bit hard to determine since i was able to do a poll there but generally speaking the board is fairly popular there even on a mario party group chat on reddit the board has some relative popularity on there. Nearly every time a Mario Party tier list is shown on there, if Koopa's Tycoon Town is anywhere from below a B rank, the people on there will basically treat your opinion as if you have burnt food, or basically treat you like trash. It is basically the, basically the Paper Mario subreddit where if you don't put T2YD in A or S rank, or even make the highest game on your tier list, you are seen as a heretic. And trust me, I know all about the Paper Mario fanbase and putting T2YD low. Because so many of those people do not like that. If you need, you don't put you put their precious baby below an A rank. And with this video in mind, it's gonna really make me seem like the devil. Oh well, but hey, at least we only actually will actually make a video exposing all the flaws of this board as a whole. My personal favorite board in Mario Party 8 is King Boo's Haunted Hideaway. And a lot of my friends on my Discord server like Shy Guys Perplexed Express more. The general consensus is that Koopa's Tycoon Town is the favorite. I didn't have everyone on my Discord server voting on the poll, but it was generally the outlier in my research. Heck, on the Mario Party Discord server, I found nearly 700 battles where users played Koopa's Tycoon Town, and it was played on at least 100 times with 4 players. I didn't calculate how many times the other boards were played on, but I feel like the other boards had similar amounts, or at least more. The boards that were second highest in terms of result reddit voting in the fanfare for many of my friends was Shy Guys Perplexed Express. That board deserves praise for being unique and a lot of fun. 
DK's Treetop Temple and Goomba's Booty Boardwalk are a bit basic. Bowser's Warped Orbit is decent but has mixed opinions. Many people really hate the board. Many people are fine with it, but most people usually don't like this board. Kimbo's Haunted Hideaway is a board that stands out as being so radically different that it's basically RNG. And then we all know Shy Guy's Flex Express is just a train. Koopa's Tycoon Town stands out as below the rest for these far superior boards. So, let's discuss why Koopa's Tycoon Town is the worst board in Mario Party 8 and the worst board in the entire Mario Party series. Including the likes of boards from Mario Party 9, 10, Island Tour, Star Rush, Top 100, DS, all those boards. Reason 1, Star Carnival and Duel Mode. Now I played this board with a few of my friends and we had an interesting experience. Let's start with the weakest complaint, Star Carnival Mode. When I did this board three times and on three different streams, it had the quickest times when I played the board. The only other, time, other boards at really quick times was the first time I streamed this mode with my good friend Glock. We both got solid times on the two boards that we swapped back and forth on when we played. King Boo's Haunted Hideaway, and Shy Guy's Perplex Express. All Koopa Tycoon Town streams will be in a playlist below. The most time it took to beat that board was 15 minutes. All other boards took far longer to beat. Even Bowser's Warped Orbit on the first stream of us doing the Star Carnival took 45 minutes and we tied with the CPU, so that time would be even longer if we'd actually continued onward and not gone ahead and actually went and just played normal Mario Party. The fact that this board is very short is probably a boon for the speedrunners, as most other boards take a good bit of time to tackle. Though this is the weakest complaint, this board is actually far better as a dual board than as a free-for-all board, but I'll discuss those in the later reasons down below. Reason 2. Against CPUs. On any difficulty. When playing Mario Party 8 alone, or even with a friend or two, you always want a solid CPU to help make the game interesting. Take the board most people have mixed feelings for. Bowser's Warped Orbit is easily one of the boards where the AI is at their best. With how the board works, it's a board where the AI can easily be a threat. Even on the hardest difficulty, the CPU needs to be a threat for players to enjoy it. In both Brutal Mario Party 8 challenges, Koopa's Tycoon Town resulted in some fairly easy results. Most of the rounds were easy sweeps, save for a few where it was close games. Koopa's Tycoon Town for me, I had a dominating lead to where the next highest only had 6 stars, and the other opponents had 0. But these were legit under 50 turn games. If we looked at other various YouTubers, Zoom's likes 50 turn stream of this board. He had 21 stars basically, but he gave the CPUs a 3 star handicap, and yet he fucking dominated them. Nintendo Movies from 5 years ago, it was a bit closer, but it was only 30 turns. Nintendo Movies did a second round of this board, and ended up with a massive sweep for player 1, who was Mario, and it was also 50 turns. Let's Play did a 20 turn game, it was relatively close for them. Beastly in 64 did a 10 turn tool such as Speed for Play, with 10 turns to basically have Peach the player character dominate the entire board. The Runaway guys did a 20 turn game with this board, and skipping to the end result of their videos, the Tino Capri Sun and Proton John dominated on the board, while Chugga was stuck in last. This is probably one of the likely outcomes with a round of friends, but this one is. Though this one, if this game had gone longer, I don't think Chugga would have enjoyed this board as much. In fact, look at the results, Chugga also did poorly in Windmillville, which is a board I also do not like, but I can also say it is slightly better than this one. Mario Super Gaming did a 15 turn tag battle with normal CPUs on this board and had a dominating win. Nintendo Movies yet again has another video on this playlist where the Boo player has a dominating lead, and this is with a 20 turn game. Nemesis Lacrosse Lacrox has a solid win with only a 15 turn game, but I'd say it's about the same as the second vid I mentioned. White Khakis has his closest round for a 20 turn game, where honestly if the player, Peach player doesn't get a single bonus star, they have a chance to lose unless the Yoshi player steals all three bonus stars. Or if they get one bonus star, when you skip the results, the Daisy player won because of the last bonus star. And Tevez, a small creator who plays Toadette and did a 50 turn game with normal CPUs, also dominated that board. 
Friends Without Benefits had a close 20 turn, 20 round game, whereas the Dry Bones player stacks all three bonus stars, they would win. But otherwise, the Water player has to get one bonus star for a guaranteed sweep. Since Dry Bones was able to get all three bonus stars, Warrior swept the entire game. Typhlosion for Preston, 15 turns normal difficulty with a Mario sweep. Even though Yoshi could could get all three bonus stars, Mario won. Luigi got all three of them though, yet the rank ranks didn't shift one bit. Yoshi Party, another small creator who did a 15 turn game with, with three hard CPUs, also had a very easy sweep as well. Mario Gamers did a tag battle with normal CPUs in a 10 turn game. However, Team Mario Bros needed to win one bonus star to easily win this entire board. Since they did, they won the whole game with ease. The final one I'll be looking at briefly is Slim Kirby from the oldest video in the playlist that I will have in the description below. 20 turns, hard CPUs, easy sweep for him. If you reached the end of this segment or skipped to this point, then here's a brief summary of what I got. One player in Koopa's Tycoon Town will sweep this board, and hopefully it's you. But including my own experiences, 13 of the 16 games that were run by YouTubers showed one player sweeping the entire game. The other three were relatively close for the other players, but in nearly every single case, the player with the most stars would easily win this board. But the fact that so many people on YouTube had this board as an easy sweep shows how this board is not that great. On Mario Party, the Mario Party Netplay Discord server, of the 788 rounds of Mario Party 8, the board was picked by members only 103 times, with only a few cases of solo rounds. But during those rounds, it was basically 50-50 whether a game had a single player sweeping or it being a close game. And I have no idea how bonus stars went on these rounds, but I'll share a few of the rounds where it has shown where it was a guaranteed win for one player, or the team. Overall, the biggest issue is how easy it is to sweep an entire game, which is fine against CPUs, but against actual humans, it's actually really bad. People praise this board so much, and yet it's the most flawed board in 8. I could end this video here with just these first two claims alone, but I won't. The first two reasons are easily refuted by how long you play a round. Most people do pick 20 turns, as that's the standard, and in shorter games this would be a fun and intense board. However, if you were to pick and get three friends to do 50 turns of this board, then you better hope everyone is skilled, or else you will have at least one or two or even three players stuck being massively behind, while one player dominates. Even giving the others handicaps will mean nothing if you go back to when I discussed Zoom's like 50 turn intense round vid video where it was a massive sweep for him. Heck, this advantage for one player player one is that they can't be set as a CPU. So they are the ones if they are the ones massive behind, then they have to suffer through the entire 50 turn game while players two through four can swap to a CPU with ease. So if you want an interesting game, then you are better off not picking this board. Just pick any other boards in eight alone for a much more interesting experience. Reason three, board gimmick. Mario Party is known for having some fun gimmicks. You have your standard star boards, your star stealing boards, your single star spot boards, which are then all split into two subcategories of their own, where some stars are purchased once, and other times more than once. You reach the end star boards, your star swapping boards, your pick a box board, then we have the star investment boards. We also have boards related to Mario Party's 9, 10, Island Tour, Star Rush, Top 100, and Super Mario Party, but we are mostly focusing on the boards from 1 through 8 in DS. Mario Party is not really known to do gimmicks for their boards. They did it in a few times in 1, but they began to do them more in Mario Party's 6 through 8 plus DS. The gimmick that Koopa's Tycoon Town has, that is shared by one other board, is the Star Investment gimmick. Even on Reddit, looking at various board tier lists, a good majority of people praise this board to death, running it as one of the best. Windmillville, on the other hand, gets treated as being far lower and always being the ones near the bottom of the list. Those who don't praise Koopa's Tycoon Town get bashed on Reddit, even in Discord and YouTube. Heck, I would say this is basically the TTYD of the Mario Party series, which I've mentioned before in terms of Paper Mario and how early on in the video that I discussed from there. But if you're willing to listen to my reasoning, then please continue on with this video. The main gimmick of Tycoon Town, which was shared by his predecessor, Windmillville, is star management. Basically, there is a limit limited number of stars on the board. And instead of chaotic and enjoyable boards that rely on star stealing, these boards require you to own something to have stars. In Windmillville, it was windmills, while Koopa's Tycoon Town uses hotels. There are five hotels on the board, all one-star hotels. However, the more money you put in them, they'll grow from one-star to a two-star, and then later on a three-star. There are also two lucky hotels 
that are three star exclusive. The main flaw with these hotels and the windmills in particular in Mario Party 7 is the limit they have. If one player were to try and place coins in a hotel that another player has higher coins in, then it doesn't matter at all. That player is taking that hotel over completely. Add that there are a few ways to make a player who has 100 coins in hotel lose coins in that hotel. The only way, way, ways for players to lose coins in a hotel are two banded happening spaces and the Bowser space, but that player has to land on it and all of them have to be completely, are completely written. Basically, they're all random, whether or not the bandit or Bowser actually will take coins from those hotels. I will discuss the bandit later on the in the video, we'll as well as also from it instead of Bowser when we discuss him much later on in this video. Collectively, then it will become but overall, Windmillville has bandit orbs that can be tossed all over the board and does the same thing but better. The fact that you can guarantee you get screwed over by bandit just by having them land on your bandit space makes it possible to sh cause shifts in the game. I've had very tough games when playing Windmillville with the brutal CPUs and the band orbs were very effective. It's also the one board where the AI actually stole orb spaces from me and even each other. Koopa's Tycoon Town, there's a lack of ways to remove coins from the hotels. Even more so with the Lucky Hotels, which are immune to all sorts of Bandit and Bowser interaction. So, if you want a guaranteed spot at even winning, stock up on coins and aim for the Lucky Spaces. If you have 100 coins, drop all of them at the Lucky Hotel and you are guaranteed 3 stars at one of the 2 Lucky Hotels. Get both, and possibly snag one of the other 5 hotels, and you force the other players to battle it out who owns all the hotels. The lucky spaces are broken on this board, and in my opinion, if this board ever got remade, get rid of those lucky spaces. Get rid of them, and you would have a much far more better experience. This board weighs heavily on total domination. It's basically the Mario Party board version of Monopoly. Shorter games are fine, as not many people end up with 100 coins in a hotel, 10 to 20 turns, unless the opponents genuinely suck ass at the game, you'll probably not have to worry about any challenge. Even against Master's level computer players, one major improvement this board would have that I'd be happy for is having the coin limit go from 100 to 999 coins. Chances of someone actually ending up with 100, 100 coins is far greater than someone with 999 coins, unless you cheat them all in. Increased hotel limit would help avoid players in just walking away to the hotel with max coins in it at hotel. Maybe in a hotel past 100 coins in it, and that hotel grow up to a 4 star hotel. Have 5 star hotels be possible. I mean, you have hotels that can go from like, have 5 star hotels in real life, wanna have that be in game. Reason 4, Donkey Kong and Bowser. Let's bring back up Windmillville again, as DK and Bowser have slightly different gimmicks when you land on their spaces. DK and Bowser, when you land on their spaces, can only give and take coins from you from a single player or multiplayer minigame. But, let's look at Bowser Time. Bowser Time has a few various events that can cause shifts in the entire game. Starting off with the weakest event, the Bowser Photo Time. That Bowser will take a photo and steal 10 20 coins from each player. The second Bowser event that can happen is the Bowser smashing a windmill. This causes all coins in that hotel to disappear, and he can crush any one of the seven windmills. The third event that can happen is having Koopa Kids steal coins from a random windmill, and it could be 30% of it. So, if all the windmills have 100 coins from in it, they'll take 30 coins from that windmill. At max, if a single windmill has all four players with 97, 98, 99, and 100 coins, and Koopa Kids steal coins from it, he'll steal over 100 coins from that specific windmill. These latter two Bowser time events are devastating, and adds to the fact that you have two Bowser spaces to avoid, plus the banner orbs and the tulip paths that have you strategized on movement, you've got an interesting board. Plus the last five turns have the option to turn all red spaces into Bowser spaces, which helps increase the chaos and the chances of winning made it much making it much harder. Now that we have looked at Windmillville, let's see what Koopa's Tycoon Town does for DK and Bowser. Unlike Mario Party 7 and similar to 6, there are two spaces that are shared by DK and Bowser. Starting with DK, he will invest 20 to 30 coins in a hotel, which will instantly make a hotel either 2 stars or 3 stars depending on the amount of coins in it. With Bowser, he can steal 10 coins from every player in one of the 5 hotels, at random. The lucky hotels are immune to Bowser stealing coins from it, which actually makes them even more broken than usual. With that in mind, you can see why Bowser is at his worst on this board. Of all the boulder boards, Bowser does nothing that can even mess with you. On all the other boards, if you land on a Bowser's face, say for DK's free top temple, where he moves a star, he will take a star from you when you reach him in Kingbo's Haunted Hideaway and Shagger's Perplex Express, and Bowser's Warped Orbit takes a star from you directly. In Goomba's Booty Boardwalk, 
He'll make you play a short game where touching fireballs will cause you to lose coins. Even if you have no money, he will give you 10 coins. And this is with all four of these boards. How disappointing can this board get? Here is where I feel like Bowser will be made even more of a threat, if he acted like a mob boss. Here is the scene. Player 3 lands on the Bowser's base, and Bowser rolls up in his nice sports car. He appears before you before ordering his minions to raise hotels of their coins. He, along with the others, will steal between 10 to 20 coins from you and all other players, making it sort of a punishment for landing on a hotel. Have look, okay, hotels have the option to lose coins, and they are, as they are pretty much safe coin banks for players who actually get lucky and land on them. Make these hotels have the possibility for a player to lose coins, or have an event where those hotels can lose coins. This is actually where Koopa Kid coming back could work very well. If they can't do that, maybe using red shelled Koopa Troopas or even blue shelled Koopa Troopas to work as sort of the minions of Bowser. Have the Koopa Troopas steal 10 coins from every player from a hotel that is not the one Bowser is in front of, while the one Bowser is in front of, he steals 20 to 30% of the total coins in that hotel. If a player owns the hotel, have Bowser be able to make the one player lose that hotel. If Klaus, Bowser could easily cause ownership to shift to another player, then he would, or if he would be more likely to target a player's hotel, they would actually make him a threat. Right now, Bowser can steal at max 40 coins. 20 in tag battle, and a dual mode one from, from one of the random hotels, and it's hardly a punishment. So, make Bowser be more punishing, and you would get a far better board. Reason 5 playing with friends, or other human players. Mario Party needs to have a balance between playing with humans and computer players. If you were ever deciding to play Mario Party and lack the friends to play with you, then you want the CPUs to give you a fair challenge, and Koopa's Taiku Town doesn't give it to you. You are almost required to play with friends, but even then, if you have one friend who is extremely skilled to play against, like Brent from the YouTube channel King of Skill, or Nick from the YouTube channel TCNick3, who has very good luck, then you're probably not going to enjoy yourself. I played with my friends, and although one of them had the opinion I vehemently disagreed with, and based on a different board, one that is a personal favorite of mine, despite I'm actually liking the gimmick the board is based on, I am the exact opposite, and I love the board but I hate the gimmick that, the, that is used in non Mario Party games. But as a discussion about that particular board, about Koopa's Tycoon Town. Can you imagine a game where you have no chance of even winning, and you are constantly attempting to get a hotel, only for you to be incapable of rolling the right number, you miss the lucky space, and the two band having spaces, and it makes it almost impossible to catch up. Or heck, nobody lands on the D DK space to turn into a Bowser space to cause the change. At least with Windmill Villa trapped like the Bandit Orb, or Bowser Time to help balance everything else, and even with human players, you can still catch up. Heck, landing on a Bowser space could also help cause you know, some chaos, as if you end up getting a multiplayer Bowser minigame, the other players, if they lose, could lose either coins or orbs, which could really affect the game. But also, sometimes, well, you also could lose your coins and orbs, so that's also kind of a nice little balance. Reason 6. Board Size In terms of board sizes, this is probably one of the boards that's a bit smaller, but it's also in the middle of the pack. From our party 1 to 8 and DS, board sizes matter greatly in terms of how they work. Some boards work far better as large boards, and some gimmicks are better suited to having a large board. Checkout's Perplex Express is a smaller board, and it works for it. Windmillville is a decent sized board, and helps with the various windmills where you collect stars. Koopa's Tycoon Town is a bit too small for the gimmick that it uses, with how easy it is to reach more than one hotel at a time, and with the ability to target more than one hotel at once, if you plan to move right, or get a really high roll with twice or thrice candy, you can easily take two hotels before another player that can react, and on board like this, going first is an easy chance to win. Last doesn't work as well, as players can make sure you don't drop coins into the hotels, because if you go last, no matter what you do, it's completely pointless. With its current layout, you have five hotels with two on top and bottom rows, and one in the middle row. If I had to alter the layout, I'd increase the number of hotels, or at least make the two lucky hotels be part of the main seven. Have a different way to reach those these hotels, like maybe have you take a left or a right on a certain junction, and then you could reach these hotels. This is a, if this is a board where if it would ever be remade, it would need something to remove the lucky spaces, and increasing this board size would definitely make it far better. This isn't a major complaint, but, this, but some boards do get complaints about their size either being way too big or way too small. This board is one that could work better as a larger board than a smaller board. 
Just looking at the number of spaces that are on Windmillville and Cooper's Tycoon Town, if they go directly to the Zooms Like source, it does seem like Zooms Like Windmillville is far bigger, yet has only 64 total spaces, while Cooper's Tycoon Town has a total of 75 spaces. In terms of size wise, Cooper's Tycoon Town was seen far bigger, yet I feel like it's actually way smaller due to the hotel gimmick. With how little chance there are for you to even lose coins in the hotels, it's almost better to just toss all your coins in the most current hotel you pass, as it allows you to avoid losing coins via cash zap. Otherwise, I'd say increasing the size of a board or a board layout overhaul would work far better. But since this board, since if this board gets remade, it might get zero changes, I'd recommend the removal of the lucky spaces and a way to reach those other two hotels. Whether you have to increase the board size to balance it out, or do something else to kind of make this board work. Reason 7, Available Candies, or Items. Compared to Windmillville's limit on orbs available, and even table. other this more pretty boards in particular, this is the one well. board where this no blue candies are available. You have all three movement candies, though I feel like the logo should be removed. You have all three of the green candies. Springo I feel like could be removed here, and you have two of the four yellow candies. This is a board that I feel like would work far better than having those two candies replaced with two blue candies. The B Bullet Candy and the Bowser Candy. Both candies exclusive to Bowser's Warped Orbit. The Bullet Candy would work like a twice candy, only you would then not be able to stop at hotels and you move in random pathway on the board. Similar to how the Bullet Bill Capsule in 5 and the Bullet Bill Orb in 6 work. The Bowser candy works so much how it works in Mario Parties 2 through 4 as the Bowser suit. The player would dress up as Bowser and roll one dice. Any player they passed by would give them 20 coins. If they passed by a hotel, the Koopa would be scared by you dressed as Bowser and would give you a percentage of the coins in the hotel to the other players. 20% to 30% of each player's coins amounts. So if one player has 100 coins in a hotel, they would take away 20 to 30 coins of it. As a bonus, it would work on the two lucky hotels, giving you an option to take coins from the other players. You wouldn't be able to drop points in any hotel, but that is the risk you are taking. Give the players more of a strategy, because the normal strategy is just placing all your coins in hotels as quickly as possible and maxing them out, as there are only three ways to lose coins. If you don't put coins in ho lucky hotels, you're, you're, you're getting a good bit of coins. By replacing those two candies with the two candies exclusive to the Bowser board, then you have a far better round and a far more enjoyable experience. Final reason, the final five turns. The last reason I have also fits just as well for our last five turns reasoning. In many cases, the last five turns can easily be a way to balance out who wins and who loses. In Koopa's Tycoon, Tycoon's Town case, it becomes a massive flaw. Mario Party 8's last five turns is still one of the worst last five turns for any Mario Party game, as the game itself plops a ton of coins onto the board. If it were me, I'd have done a roulette of options. These options could be 20 to, 30, 20 to 40 coins for that last place player, a candy, all space dread spaces become Bowser spaces, space coin multiplier times 2 or times 3, anything. The final 5 turns actually makes this board go even worse, especially if you are stuck in last, because on Koopa's Tycoon Town, going first matters the most. So if the final 5 turns were to be altered, they would actually affect all the boards. This board would especially... This board actually would benefit from something like this. The only board I should actually I should lose a lot of this could be Coop, could be King Boo's Haunted Hideaway, but even then, the last five turns on that board can easily be destroyed if you have one player reach King Boo right as the final five turns begins and they're going first. All those coins could go to waste. But if the last five turns were to be a roulette of gimmicks and we got the coin multiplier, or we did the whole options where red spaces became Bowser spaces, then you could have a bit more chaos. This actually would help make things work better. Heck, the solo duel rounds has the as the last as the player actually who's losing actually spin a wheel and get a gift, where they also can get absolutely nothing. Give us that option. How is maybe actually throw a dart at a wheel to kind of keep the whole Wii Motion gimmick, and now you have yourself a far better last five turns, making things chaotic. That's what you need. You want to have, have the ability to shift the game to where maybe the person who's actually winning could end up losing. 
Mario Party 8 has a lot of nostalgia for a lot of fans, but at the same time, it's also not a favorite Mario Party for a lot of other fans. In terms of boards, quite a few of them have decent ratings. Even my own friends had mixed feelings with this board. One of them honestly prefers this board over my personal favorite board, a board that I will always rate high since 5 stars because I really enjoy it. With how Mario Party 8 was the last Mario Party game that had the classic Mario Party formula for everything changed for nearly a full decade, it's a wonder why quite a few people would praise this board. With the release of Superstars and now Super Mario Party Jamboree, Mario Party is back. Although these modern boards do have their fans, a good majority do prefer the classic games. Koopa's Tycoon Town is a board that has a lot of potential. I, I do feel like if they had continued and went on a different direction than they did with 9, then they could have been able to actually improve the flaws that this board truly has. It's a board that has potential to be great, but right now Koopa's Tycoon Town is the worst board in Mario Party history. Every single board before it and after it have been way better and far more enjoyable for me. I love Mario Party, this is one of my favorite series. I would prefer a board theme like this never return again, but if ND Cube were to bring this gimmick back, like how they did with some of the other unique board gimmicks, then I'd like to have them at least take these flaws at its feedback and work on Wit making this next board with this gimmick be the best board of this theme. Even if this board gets remade on a much later date, the developers were to make at least a few of these changes I've mentioned, mainly reasons 3, 4, and 7, then this board could go from being a really bad board to a really good board. Thank you again for watching this discussion of a popular Mario Party board. Please like this video and then share your thoughts on this board. If you enjoy this board, share with me why you enjoy this board in the comment section below. If you are not fond of this board, share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you are indifferent on this board and you have any thoughts on how this board could be improved, please share your comments. Thank you again for watching this video and I hope you have a golden day.